God bless you, and we will read Isaiah 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain, he covered his face. With twain, he covered his feet. And with twain, he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. <clears throat> and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go, and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Now, one of the things I have to say inspired me yesterday. I heard something and I want to repeat it. For some of you who know you're gifted or some of you who have a feeling of where your gifts are moving in, what direction you're moving into, remember this. When you want to hurry up and get to a certain height and spiritual stature, when you want to get to your certain levels of growth, deliverance, healing, it's normal, it's humanly normal and natural to want to get there yesterday. The part we don't like is what I call the process, right? The process is God working with time to get us to the fullness of time which has not come yet for us. So when you get frustrated with yourself and you get frustrated with life, what ends up happening is you're not realizing that these are your building blocks. So here's the, the sentence I want you to memorize. Your giftings, if you're not careful, your talents and gifts will take you where your maturity level cannot keep you. And there are times when things don't move as quickly as you want them to move. Because if you arrive too soon, you will demolish the very thing God's been building in your life. There's nothing worse than a, 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 a weapon of mass destruction in the hand of a novice that needs to feel important, that's insecure, that needs to feel like they're all that in the bag of chips, that needs to feel like they have some authority and power. Mm. So, so what I want you to know, what I want you to understand is God is working on you. Now, if you look at the potter and you look at the, the, the vessel he's creating, once he's done the forming and the shaping and everything is ready to go, 
it has to sit, then he has to put it in the kiln. When it goes in the kiln, it is now in the fiery furnace. While it's in the fiery furnace, it is being solidified. It is being fortified. The process that goes on in the fiery furnace is totally um it's a puzzle it's a mystery to the vessel that's sitting there being fried to death but it has to go into that level of heat that high level of temperature life has to bake some of your behinds before you can be ready to even be considered useful in the Lord's hand. Because if that thing is not baked, it's not strong enough to be used for anything. It's good for nothing. When you want to eat an egg, you have to put that egg in the, in the water. The water has to come to a boil. If you want to eat a solid, hard-boiled egg, it must stay in that boiling water at least four or five minutes. It has to stay, whether you simmer or hard boil, whatever. It has to be in there at least, I call it five minutes, because I don't like anything soft in a hard boiled egg. So, things take time. Some things take heat. Some things take cold. If you want to strengthen water, how do you strengthen water? You stick it in the freezer and let it solidify into ice. Then it's strong. You can use it as a weapon and throw it and give somebody a black eye. <laughs> My point is there are things that take time to go through a process. Mm. And some of you are in a hurry. You're, you, you, you know, you get in the race and you think the whole race is to be won at top speed. You want to sprint your way through life. You cannot sprint your way through life. Some of you will have to crawl your way. There'll be periods in your life you feel like you're barely crawling. There will be other periods in your life when you feel like, whew, yeah, I, I got it going on. And you, you get your little sprint on. But then, boom, life happens. And you got to sit down somewhere. But you can't stay down. You can rest for a minute, but you can't stay. And then God will blow that whistle, and you got to keep moving. Because God is progressive. And so are we. So when your life is, is manifesting in front of you, and you're wondering, why am I having the financial struggle? Why am I having the physical challenge? Why is this relationship going south? Why am I having a hard time controlling what I should normally have control over? Why is this going on? There are times when God will allow that thorn in your side to remain for a while because he sees a thing in you called pride. And sometimes you have to get so sick of smelling yourself that you will never get full of yourself again. And when God knows you're at that point, that thorn will be removed. But until that time, you'll have to live with the thorn, whether the thorn is your own shortcomings, whether the thorn is something that makes you feel humiliated in your own right, not something that embarrasses you, but something that makes you feel humiliated, something that, that, that gets you frustrated with yourself. It may be a situation you're living with that you don't like, but you know you can't jump shit. That's not what God wants. He wants you to stay and ride this wave out. You don't like that. Well, all of this is part of your making. It may be that nobody acknowledges you. Nobody acknowledges your gift, your significance, your importance, 
nobody thinks much of you or you spend a lot of time alone and nobody has time for you. Nobody wants to be around you. And you feel like, well, what's wrong with me? What am I, chopped liver? And you go, I'm going to tell you, you're going to go through periods like that. And they're painful. They hurt. And while you're going through, you got to keep remembering, God, please take the hurt out because I know you're processing me, but I don't like it. Help me to trust myself in your hands. I don't like this, Lord. It's uncomfortable. It's tight. It's hot. It's cold. Whatever the case may be, it is unpleasant. And you'll have those high moments. Some days you'll be on the mountaintop and you'll see the glory of God. And then other times you'll be like, oh, Lord, you want to hide under a rock. You're so ashamed of yourself. It's all part of life. Sometimes you'll have moments of loss, lost relationships, loss of money, very bad decisions. You thought you heard from God, but you didn't. You missed it. It's all part of being human. But the whole time, you're trying to do it God's way. That's the main thing that counts. But as long as you stay the course. You got to stay there. You got to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Go from glory to glory, from strength to strength. When it feels like you're going from shame to shame, the fire to fire, or from the frying pan to the fire. But it's all taking you from glory to glory, from strength to strength, even your failures. God knows what it will take. Now, you're looking at a person who has gone through her life being the reject. I'm very com not comfortable. It's common to me to know what it feels like not to truly fit in. It's commonplace for me to know what it feels like for people not to desire my company. It's common for me to know what it feels like to be laughed at. That's common. I know what that feels like. That's a pain I've become well acquainted with. And I don't like it. But it just happens to be something I had to go through. I know what it feels like to feel like I'm not well equipped. I'm not well prepared. I'm not where I should be in my life. I haven't accomplished that much in my life at all. I haven't made great strides. I've wasted some of my years. But no matter what, I know God loves me and I know he has me. So what that does is stops me from thinking too highly of myself. But by the same token, I know that I have to go through the process. And that's why I can tell you you have to go through the process. I'm talking from experience because there comes a certain amount of crushing of that olive, crushing. The more you crush it, the more oil you, you extract from it. And the more oil, the heavier your anointing. You want to serve God. You want to please God. You want to grow. You want to be strong. But it comes with the crushing. It comes with the beating. It comes with the rejection. It comes with being laughed at. It comes with being not understood. It comes with people giving up on you. Broken relationships. It comes with financial loss. Spiritual loss. It comes with failure. It comes through the fiery furnace. And it comes through the cold. When things just seem like it's all growing cold on you. 
when you feel like you're growing cold and you're scared, oh Lord, don't let me grow cold. It's all part of the process. Every situation motivates you to handle things a certain way. And God knows what it's going to take to get you from point A to point Z. He knows every flat tire, every time you lose money, every time you do something stupid, and you wonder, how could I be so stupid? Every time you get intimidated by the devil when you should have taken authority, every time you win, every time you get the victory, every time you triumph, every time you disappoint yourself, once again, I mean, it is all part of the process because what you gain along the way is understanding. What you gain is insight. And the greatest thing you gain is compassion, patience, mercy. Mm. And when you gain that, you can handle God's people with a shepherd's heart. You don't browbeat them. Mm. So all of this you're going through, the people in your life that frustrate you, the ones you want to tell or cuss out, all of that, it's all part of your making. Because when God pulls you up to use you as a witness, you have to be able to handle it. And you may be highly gifted in a lot of areas, but it doesn't mean that you're ready for the ultimate. Yeah, he'll use you from level to level. He'll use you in increments. Yes, some of you will explode because you can handle the explosion. And it'll be an explosion of blessing and ministry and all of that. And others will seem like they spend their life on the shelf. But the bottom line is, I hate to say this because this is not meant as an insult, but it's a street term. Every dog has his day. <laughs> and there comes a point when God says he blows his whistle like the coach and he calls you in. And you're to make the final play. I need you to go and make this move. This is what you do, and we're going to win this game. But we're counting on you. And then you'll know that God has called you forward and put you on the front lines, baby, for your ordained purpose, for your divine call. But right now, I remember for years I kept telling God, I feel like I'm floating around in limbo. Nothing's happening. What is this? It's all part of it. It's part of it. Even getting angry at that is part of it. Because God is working things out of you while he's importing things into you. Mm. Okay. So what happens when the king Uzziah died? Isaiah saw the Lord. There are things that will die in your life before you encounter God in different ways. And they will be pivotal moments in your life that you will never forget, that will carry you through. Now, when he said he was high and lifted up, what happened after the angel touched his mouth? Instant repentance. He suddenly became aware, honestly aware of his weaknesses, his sinfulness, his frailty, his nasty spirit, his everything that was so diametrically opposed to God's perfection, holiness, and glory. And it wasn't until he became totally aware of how un, how 
unworthy he was that God said, ah, go. Now, if he had said, Lord, send me, I'll go. But he had not come to grips with the fact that he was a wretch compared to God. God couldn't have used him. He couldn't have used him because he would have gone in his own pride. Oh, I'm going to go tell these folks. Yeah, I'm going to put them in their place. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's not what God wants. Even if you have to go and warn a people and get on their case and fuss, you know, in place of God, I mean, actually have a harsh word for them. Even that has to be done in love. So one of the things we're learning along this journey is how God loves so that we learn how to handle people without breaking them in our hands. If you mishandle a pot, you're going to break it. Have you ever watched wash the glass? I have. Washing it, getting all enthused, you're getting it all good and clean. And what happens? It falls apart right there in the sink. Well, how did that happen? Like a bull in the china closet. You go in too fast, too soon, too hard, too much, too everything. And it's all about you. But when it's about God, you're careful. You're careful about your approach. You're careful about how you handle. You're careful about the words that come out of your mouth. You're feeling for God's timing so that you're not doing something good out of season. See, when, when God wants you to do good things, yeah, but there are times when you being used is out of season. That's why... That expression, that's where that expression applies. Your giftings, yeah, they'll take you to places where your maturity can't keep you. If you're not ready, if you're not mature in the spirit, you will have a very difficult time because you will inadvertently sabotage the very thing God called you to do through your immaturity, through your attitude, by your words, through your ways, your actions. Mm. So what happened was Isaiah had the right attitude. Woe is me. Oh, my goodness. He had the right attitude. Now, there comes another point where we are getting prepared, we're praying, we're seeking God's face, we're doing all of that, which is good. You have to do that. We're reading his word. Now, I'm going to say this to some of you. I'm guilty of it too. All of us are from time to time, but don't let it be your lifestyle. Don't be slack about reading God's word. The more you read God's word, the more you realize what you don't know. And the more your eyes are open. The more your eyes are open, the clearer you see. The clearer you're, you, you see with more clarity, more understanding, more insight. The clearer you see the better you navigate through life, the better you navigate through life, the higher God can take you and the higher he can use you. But if you're lackadaisical about God's word and you're lackadaisical about staying in his presence and you would rather go do other fun stuff, what will end up happening is the assignments God had for you to do you won't even hear him when he's tapping at your heartstrings to give you an assignment. He'll be knocking and knocking and knocking, even though he's in your life. You won't hear him because you'll be so cluttered with so much other noise that all your other life will drown out the voice of God. And you will miss many opportunities to be used by him. 
And if you want to be used by him, you can either be a secretary or you can be the CEO. But all of that comes from what you apply to the relationship, what you bring. You can have a deep, rich relationship or you can have a casual acquaintance. That's all up to you. And your relationship will also determine your altitude, not just your attitude, but your relationship with God, his word, and his holiness. Mm. Okay, see, God is fair. He's not going to tell you to do what he won't equip you to do. 